want to create an effect like this, let me show you how. First things first, you want to go to your project settings and you want to change it from landscape to portrait, so it's 1080 by 1920 and you want to make sure the playback is in 24 frames per second, as mine is here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to drag in your, your clip and then one by one you're going to drag over your assets. Now I created the assets from scratch using a free vector software called Inkscape and I'll leave that in the description for you below. It's a little tricky to use, it's not like your Adobe Illustrator but as for the text I simply wrote a bit of waffle and then applied the matrix fonts I downloaded from dafont.com and again I will uh, I'll leave that in the description for you. And then to get that onto the circle, you want to duplicate it, and then you want to go to text, put on path, and then just so we have it nice and uniform, go like that. So that all. And the only way you can rotate it is by rotating the circle itself, not the actual text. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and change the colour of the text. We're going to take the eyedropper tool and pop. Wonderful, same colour. Now to delete the circle, it's a bit more tricky. Because if you delete the circle, you're going to go back to square one. So what you're going to do is to click on the text itself. And then you're going to go to Object, Pop to Path. Circle, bosh, and then to get the other hemisphere, then you just kind of copy and then turn it around using the awkward tools that Inkscape have for you. But it's a free software, so it does the job. Once you're circle complete, you can go ahead and export the assets. Make sure you export them as a selection rather than a drawing or custom because it will bring. The page along with you. What you want is that uh, transparent background. So then what we're going to do then is build it up layer by layer. And the circle. Then we're going to have the text or first piece of text. And then we can go circle again, just to encase the text like so. And then we're going to go. This is where we're going to put in the in the text. Here, this is just a smaller font than last time. And then pad this out with circles. Before bringing in the squares, now with the squares, what we're going to do is tilt. We're going to turn to a rhombus, I suppose. Scale that down, and then we're going to do a minus 75 degrees. And then we do the same but opposite with the other square. We're going to scale it down to 0.38 and then that will be 75 degrees. This is just in preparation for when we animate. And then we're just going to finish off with a couple of circles. Pop them in there, lovely. Not an awkward way of doing this. There we go, we've got the two circles. We're just going to scale them down like so. And there you have it, that is our design. Well, then what we're going to do is move on to the, the animations. So what we're going to do is actually only animate the, the text and the squares. So what we're going to do is we're going to set a keyframe here, start the clip, move to the end, and we're simply going to have it rotate 360 degrees. Just like that. And then we're going to do the same for the inner circle. Start the clip, we're going to set a keyframe at zero. And then we're going to move the cursor head along, play head along to the end there. And then the 
that's also going to be well, we're actually going to go minus 360 just so that it continues in the direction opposite to the outer layer. Render is not the best, so it's a bit jittery. Well, you get the idea. Moving on to the squares, then, what we're going to do is for the minus 75, is we're going to keyframe that and then go to the end and we're going to do minus 720. We're going to get some faster rotations out of this square and then make sure that's all playing correctly. We've got a little set of this same above, set the keyframe at 75, move the playhead to the end and we're going to go to 720. And we're going to go counter the direction of last time. There we go, whoosh! Top job if I do say so myself. And now that we've got the building blocks all set and complete, we're going to squash that down. We're going to go right hand click, and we're going to go new compound clip, and we're going to name this spell. Just so we have a little bit more of a tidy workflow. So we're going to scale this right the way down, all the way down to about 310, and then move it across the X and Y axes. And we're going to get it into a point which we should be able to track, but for some reason my tracker is not working. So I'm going to have to painstakingly keyframe this by by hand once we're happy with the size. So I'm going to play this through. Uh, there we go, you can see that we're going to have to shift that across a little bit just so it stays consistent at a certain point of my gesture. So what we're going to do is set another keyframe and then we're going to drive the playhead to the ends and then set where we want the animation to end up. Just so it looks like it's following my hands. not too bad considering we're not actually tracking anything. Just going to do little tiny increments. Try to speed up this process, it is a bit fiddly. Every couple of frames Then we want some movement, we want to make it more, more alive, so we're going to start off small. Okay, scale it down. And then also change the opacity, so that it just comes out of thin air. What we're going to do is set three keyframes. We're going to set one at 100. And the next one then, we want that to be zero. And then the one right at the start is also zero. Middle keyframe to something like that. that way, then this capacity goes from transition to opaque. Next, we head into fusion. We go shift space bar and then type in glow. Then we're going to play with the glow on the right hand side. Make sure we don't blow it out too much. Okay, so next thing I want to do 
is the other hand. Now, this one's a little bit more fiddly because I am snapping my fingers. But what we're going to do is reset all of the keyframes. And we're just going to scale that down so it's a little bit smaller because it is supposed to be more behind me. Manually tracking my my hands. Just so I am comfortable with it. What I'm going to do is find out in between each snap of the fingers. We are going to delete a couple of frames to give that illusion of me magic's not working. Then you want to go through a couple of times and clip when necessary. And then the final thing to do once you are happy with everything is to apply the glow. Make sure we've got the same glow as the first. Lovely. And then what we're going to go down is to go to the blend mode and we're going to drop down to screen. Looks a whole lot better. By all means, you can have a little play. The screen is uh, it's definitely your go to. Play that through if my renderer will allow. Not quite. But yeah, once you're happy with that, then what you're going to do is jump into renderer, name the file of a strange tutorial clip and then choose the location and put it onto my desktop, save and then add to queue, render all. Now this process can take a while so I've just sped everything up here just a tad and then it is ready to be exported. Done. Now what you do there is check that it is going through nicely and then it is ready to go, ready to go to your social medias.